Guess what? It's April and it's time for your tarot reading. I'm sorry I lost my voice. That's why they're a little bit late and that's also why it sounds like shit, but let's get started. Sup Pisces? Happy April. So we are going to look at your social and emotional well-being, um, your career, your money, and then your love life if you're single, coupled, or non-defined relationships. So maybe it's new. Maybe it's not Facebook official. Maybe it's on again, off again. Maybe you're with somebody who is married. Maybe you're polyamorous. So that's where we're going to go in this reading. Um, as far as like your crystal of the month and your lucky day, I'm going to send that out in an email because since I had lost my voice, I don't want to lose it again. So I'm going to try to make these really quick. And so if you're not on my email list, you should be because number one, I only send one email a month. I don't send you like a thousand. Even when there's a special, it just comes out in that one email. Also, that's how you enter to win a 20 minute uh, video reading that's personal. So that's a bonus. Um, if you're looking at it from mobile, it's a little green smiley face at the bottom of the page. So here we go. Straight out the gate, before we get into the topics I wanted to discuss, they're like, you might be all up in your feelings. You and somebody else might have the same end goal in mind. And this could even be you and an entity, like you and your workplace. You both want you to achieve, but you want to achieve like the way you want to do it. And they have different ideas of how you should be doing your job. Or, you know, even in relationships, like, you know, maybe, um, I don't know why this is coming up. This might be a specific, like a specific message for somebody, but it's like, okay, maybe you had a parent die, unfortunately, and I'm sorry for your loss, but it's like, maybe you and your siblings want to sell your parents' house, but you want to use one realtor, they want to use another. You want to wait until summer, they want to do it now, um, they want to have an estate sale. You want to have a garage sale or just donate everything. And so like the end goal is the same, but you're bickering and arguing and fighting over like how to achieve those things. And so like in um, romantic relationships, that could be the case too. It's like we both want to be together, but I want to live with you and I want to have my own space kind of thing. So just focusing on that end goal is going to be very important. They're saying trying to... Um, Avoid communicating electronically where tone can be fucked up uh, for anybody generally is going to be a good idea for Pisces in the month of April. So you know how they're like when people are like, oh, I'm so happy for you by text message. You might read that as like, oh, I'm so happy for you, all condescending and sarcastic. But really it's, hey, I'm so happy for you and causes strain in relationships. So they're saying, Pisces, you're a very loving person. Try not to overgive and be too generous this month. That will bite you in the ass. Um, but you're already aware of that. You just might do it anyway because you're a caring, loving person. Um, but if this person, you know, like people or situations, even workplaces that you give too much to, when that turn, when you don't get what you want back, when it doesn't come back to you, like historically, learn your fucking lesson. Stop it. They're saying, um, you know, this is going to be a month that has a lot of growth potential and a lot of exciting new things coming their way. Um, although they're not going to come in the beginning of April, it will come more towards the end of April for you. But there are things that you should be excited and feel a lot of love and joy for. But you should follow that advice that I have previously given you um, in order to have the best possible outcome. Now, what's going on in your social and emotional world in April? And they're saying you might not be feeling super confident when the month starts, but this is not because of anything in the past or anything that you have as far as fear goes um, based on the past. This energy is something that will change very quickly. It might just be astrological or something. And that might be because I don't know much about astrology because I do tarot, not astrology. However, it might have something to do with we're like in an Aries new moon, which is like kind of this like you know, very powerful, almost abrasive fire energy. And you're a sensitive water sign. And so it just might not make you feel like super in your element. Okay. Um, anything else in regards to that? They say um, you've got to be kind of ready to defend yourself against those types of energies, against that, especially fire sign energies. Um, they're saying that this is something that... 
um, takes time to learn how to do. You logically know how to do it, but you don't know how to apply it. And so with that, they're saying oftentimes it has to do with ending a certain pattern or behavior and then picking up a new one. And for everybody, that's going to be a little bit different, but this is how you find your strength. So I want to actually switch decks here. Um, give me a sec. So how you doing? Talk amongst yourselves. Just kidding. You're probably watching this on your own. I'm looking for my deck that will help me help you know what the appropriate method is to kind of defend yourself. Okay. And so they are saying, okay, this is so interesting. Um, they're not talking because they're saying not like anything related to exercise. So they're not talking about like physically defending yourself. Like, hey, I'm going to take martial arts. So anybody fucks with me, I'm just going to kick their ass. No, it's nothing like that. They're saying um, figuring out a way to artfully use like your chakra energies. And so I'm going to assume that this means like color energies. Okay. So like shielding. Um now I'm going to pull a color card for you so we know what color to shield with. When in doubt, always use purple. That's what I do because it's got this um, I'm rubber, you're glue kind of, uh, you know, like the childhood thing. Like I'm rubber, you're glue, whatever you say bounces off of me and sticks to you. It's got that kind of a vibe. So like when I would waitress, I would use purple all the time because if somebody um, is an asshole, basically what happens is it bounces off of my shield back at them. They feel bad for the way that they treated me, even if they don't apologize. So they naturally just give me more money, like a bigger tip. If they were feeling like, you know, cheap or whatever, like, oh, she probably thinks I'm cheap. Or the people around me who saw me tip probably think I'm cheap. I need to give her more money. So that was good. But then conversely, if somebody's very sweet and very generous, that bounces off of my shield back at them. And they're like, oh my gosh, I did a really good deed. And then they are um, rewarded and therefore want to continue to do that. So you, I would go from, you know, like let's say a drink is $8.50. They give me $9. They're like, hmm, that didn't feel good. Next time they give me $10, they're like, oh, that feels a little better. Then before you know it, they're, they're giving me 15, keep the change, right? Awesome, huh? So they say for you that um, the energy is not green. It's not about expressing more love to people or anything like that. It's about um, magenta and attracting more love vibe into your life. And so um, you're going to con connect to your intuition through this magenta color. It's a blend between the heart chakra and um, the third eye chakra. So what you're going to, this is going to be a little bit unique in the way that this works is so as you're going to be around people or pick up the phone or video chat or whatever it is, you'll want to kind of cleanse your energy through the third eye and the heart chakra simultaneously. You're going to suck in like with a deep breath, this magenta color. Okay. So bring it in and then exhale it out. Then imagine a big magenta bubble around you and then intuitively you're going to kind of know what other people's motivations are, who you should steer clear of, who you should be near and then people will be inclined to be kinder and more loving to you and that's the way you're going to defend yourself, okay? We kind of got lost on a tangent there. But they say this will be very lucky for you and it actually will be very lucky um, for some of you, especially people with Scorpio in their chart. If you have like Pisces and Scorpio, if you're very heavy water, um, it will be helpful for you to actually attract a mate, potentially. So good for you. Yay. Um, so career, what's up? They say looking at things from a different perspective is going to be very important. They say that it's not time to make a decision, but at least to weigh your options, to look at all sorts of different options. They're saying that... Um, if you are too hasty in making decisions about your career path, about your job, about your money, that um, this will not work out well for you financially. Um, and, you know, they're saying like sometimes a more untraditional path is the path to walk down. Now, sometimes we feel like we don't have options, right? But there's always an option, even if the option is shitty, it's still, there's still options, okay? So they want you to think about that. And they say it might be painful to even think about it, but understand that you're okay, you're fine. Like, even if you're jobless right now, um, 
it, things are going to be okay. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Shift your perspective. Be open to different possibilities and new ideas because they can pay off for you. Some of you, it's going to be like kind of getting ready to move on from whatever it is that you're doing in search of something better. And maybe you even love your job. Maybe you even like it quite a bit, but you know that there's something better out there for you. And so they're saying like, it's kind of coming to that point of realization and then moving on with that. As far as your love life go, if you are a single Pisces, they're saying so many people have this empress energy as singles where you're very attractive. Um, people are naturally drawn to you. You might be, your body might be banging a little bit more than usual. This is maybe TMI, but like two or three days before I get my period, I'm like, oh my God, my body is banging. And I think that's the reason why is because it's like my uterus is going, hey, Last ch chance to get me pregnant, right? Something like that. Whereas some people get like a little bit bloated. I do the opposite. But you're going to be like in that vibe, like in that mode where it's just like radiating all of this sexiness. People might be a little bit afraid to talk to you. Um, but the interesting thing here is like if somebody um, comes up to you and approaches you and they have malicious intent or they want to use you for your banging body or whatever, you're going to pick up on that right away. You're very intuitive this month. And then um, you'll also be able to tell, even if somebody's afraid to approach you, you'll be able to pick up on that and then go start a conversation with them. However, they're saying it isn't, again, it's... You know, it is funny that it's like, oh, well, it's not necessarily a good month for Pisces that are single to make any solid decisions in regards to their love life, but it's hard for you guys to make decisions <laughs> anyway, stereotypically, right? So they're saying, just think on things a little bit. It's okay to take a break. It's okay to say, let me think about it. It's not going to disrupt anything or like ruin anything that's meant to be. So maybe somebody asks you out and you're like, you know what? Let me think about it. I'm not sure. And then process that for, you know, up to four days, not more than that. But they're saying because, you know, for example, somebody might look super smoking hot in a suit, like in a business suit. And then the next day you see them in sweatpants leaving the gym and you're like, Bleh. um, different situations and circumstances might change your mind. And so like, even if you're being pressured to maybe have sex with somebody, you can say, let me think about it. I don't know if I'm ready yet. Because you know what? If they're the right person for you, you're not going to blow your chance. You're not going to fuck it up because the right person is going to wait for you. Um, regardless if that's whether you're going out with them or you're going to bang them or whatever. Okay. Now for those of you who are coupled... They're saying like, this is a good month for inner reflection, for figuring out what it is that you really want. Because not every aspect of this relationship is super happy. Um, and I mean, that's the case in every relationship, right? But I'm getting a weird message for like some of you with like a curable STD. Some, it might be like a flare up of like vaginosis or syphilis or um, something not permanent. So they're like, you know, that might really bum you out <laughs> and you probably don't want to talk about it, but it is important that you go to the doctor to get that handled and then you get a lot of rest. So, um, they're like, if it's something curable, you don't actually have to tell your partner if you're resting, just be like, I'm sick. Cause some of you don't want to have that conversation cause you're afraid like your partner's gonna be like, where did that come from? And then you're gonna have to be like, it's from you slut. <laughs> just kidding. But whatever. Um, it could just be like a yeast infection. It could be from taking a bubble bath, but they're like, you don't have to actually say anything or tell anything to them. And I know that sounds like shitty advice, like you're supposed to, so you can both be treated, but like whoever this is like making feel super panicked or whatever, they're like, you know, you don't have to say anything. It's fine. Um, they're saying, cause if you do, it might create some sort of stress or drama. Maybe they overreact and, um, if, and maybe they leave you. But sounds to me like somebody who does that probably should leave anyway. <laughs> but they're like, okay. So that was kind of a tangent. Now, for the rest of you, there's this overflowing of love feelings despite the fact that not everything is happy all of the time and not everything is fair 100% of the time. Uh, what they're saying is the more time that you spend together, the more that you're able to generate more of this loving, happy um, stuff. So don't distance yourself from your partner whenever troubles come up this month. Now, for those of you in undefined relationships, they're saying there might be a little bit of pain this month, specifically in your, if you're in a polyamorous relationship or in a three party type situation, that will be there a little bit of jealousy. But what they're saying is 
your boo is in it for the long term with you, despite whatever kind of jealousy, pain, hurt, disappointment you have right now, they're in it to win it. It doesn't seem that way right now, necessarily. It doesn't feel like they're giving you the signs that this is the case. But there's also saying like, sometimes you're not supposed to see all of that. You're just supposed to have trust and go with the flow, you know, mindful mindfulness of like the day-to-day -day experience and remembering that you have a lot to offer a partner. You have a lot of worth and that your partner is attracted to you for that in the first place. And so they're saying, you know, if you are able to communicate love despite your pain, despite your hurt this month, whenever that kind of stuff arises, um, it might be a little bit dramatic for a second. But... The thing is, is that things are going to get better as a result right after. You'll feel more optimistic and hopeful about the potential of the future. And sure, you're not going to be 100% happy, but nobody ever is. You might not even be excited. But if you take that time and, you know, you just say in a very loving way how you feel and um, get a good night's sleep, with some quality sleep, and then spend time, you know, togetherness wise with this person or these people, you will feel much better and you'll feel a lot more solid. They say, you know, honestly, for those of you in the undefined relationships, you know, even if it's like, hey, we just started dating and maybe we're both seeing other people or maybe I want it to be exclusive, but they're still seeing other people, you're going to feel emotionally imbalanced about that for a while. But like, you should pray about it. You should read your tarot cards or do yoga or meditate or whatever it is you do in order to feel um, in touch with your spiritual side because the answers lie there for you and they will help you to remind yourself of your worth and um, that what's meant to be will be and everything's going to be okay. You are going to be okay. It's not like catastrophe. It feels that way maybe sometimes with this kind of feeling of jealousy, disappointment, hurt, pain is going to pass. And so your affirmation for all Pisces, um, this is not necessarily related to love even though it is um, talking about love, is love is powerful. Your love and my love. Love brings us peace on earth. The more we love ourselves, the more we love each other, the more love there is in the world and the better th that everything is. And bye, Pisces beauty queens with your very loving affirmation answer. See you in May. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20-minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!